books, stamps, Beanie Babies, movie tickets. Why do people collect things? What's the point? Hey collectors, Julia here for DNews. In today's world, downsizing is big, getting rid of clutter is trendy, and people are learning to live with less. Yet, there will always be that one person you know who collects things, like Shelly McHugh on Twitter who collects cheap things, or my friend Chastity who has kept movie tickets from every movie she's been to since 1997. So why do people do it? I turned to Twitter for some personal answers. People have all sorts of reasons. For some, collecting is a way to bond with people, like Brewy Vision collected coins as a hobby to share with her dad. Moity Mouse said they collect rocks out of curiosity about the world around them. Dr. Zen collects keychains because he enjoys the thrill of the hunt. People like this aren't just weird pack rats, they're just fulfilling a natural urge. The urge to collect is very primitive and is found throughout the animal kingdom. Over 70 species have been documented to collect, rats and crows for example. The bower bird of eastern Australia and Queensland collects unusual objects as part of an elaborate courtship ritual. So some researchers think collecting goes back to our early days as humans. For our hunter-gatherer ancestors, collecting food can mean the difference between life and death during a harsh growing season or famine. So it's not surprising this trait evolved. But collecting Beanie Babies won't help you survive a winter. Sorry 90s kids, they're pretty worthless, unless it's a rare princess dye bear or something. So what is going on in the brain? Like Dr. Zen said, it's the thrill of the hunt. When you find that thing, like that rare baseball card, your brain releases a hit of dopamine that tells your brain, yeah, this is good, do it again. This probably helped our ancestors find food. Finding some ripe berries made their brains go, yep, awesome, these will keep us alive, do it again. But after a while, the brain gets used to it and it doesn't release as much dopamine the next time they found those berries, so you keep seeking, keep hunting for the next thrill. That kept our ancestors alive, it keeps us seeking and collecting. Research published in the journal Brain found the specific area of the brain responsible for collecting behavior. The researchers identified 13 patients with focal brain lesions who exhibited abnormal collecting behavior but performed fine on tests of intelligence, memory, and reasoning. They showed no signs of abnormal collecting before the brain damage. After using high-resolution 3D MRI, the researchers found the culprit. It turns out that the brain was damaged in a very specific place, in a part of the frontal lobe of the cortex, particularly on the right side. Speaking of abnormal collecting, behavior, are you having trouble letting go of your collection? That's not so unusual, in fact, it's pretty biological. Dr. Loretta G. Bruning, founder of the Inner Mammal Institute, describes an experiment where monkeys were given spinach as a reward for a task, which, you know, they liked. But when they were given a grape, their dopamine levels spiked. After a while of getting that grape as a reward, their brain stopped spiking as much dopamine, so it stopped feeling as good. Then the researchers switched back to spinach and the monkeys were not happy at all. They missed the grapes, even if they stopped feeling as good. So for most of us, it's perfectly natural to not feel good about letting things go, but sometimes it's a problem. Another study published in the journal Archives of General Psychiatry using MRI techniques found that patients with hoarding disorder have abnormal activity in the anterior cingulate cortex and insula. They had lower activity than other people when faced with the idea of giving away stuff that didn't belong to them, but more activity when faced with the thought of giving away their own stuff. The patients reported indecisiveness and feeling like things were just not right. Another study published in the American Journal of Psychiatry found that people who hoard showed decreased brain activity in the posterior cingulate gyrus, an area involved in spatial orientation and memory. This could be why some people who hoard have problems with clutter and fear of losing their things. Maybe their stuff is associated with a certain memory. So some collecting natural and benefited us back in the day. A lot of collecting and keeping, well, they make whole shows about that. To see firsthand how enthusiastic some people get about their collection, check out this great episode from Seeker Stories, all about a group of people who collect sneakers. It was body to body people. I mean, no type of order, no nothing. The door is literally barricaded by 100 people, and he's literally letting one person in, shutting the door. Are you a collector? What do you collect and why do you do it? Tell us your stories down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons and keep coming back here. We've got new episodes of D News every day of the week.